Welcome to the final developer diary for F1 2010. At the beginning of the game, you don't start off as a test driver, you start off as a, um, a driver that's managed to secure a seat in a team at the beginning of the year. You know, in the real world, before you go to a track, before you start the season, you're fully aware with your team what the expectations are. Depending on the kind of difficulty level that you're, you've selected, that determines the teams that are open uh, to you at the beginning of the game. You always, as a driver, want to be beating your teammate. That really elevates you in the team. It also alerts the other teams to your ability. The garage is a key location in the game. You've got your animated crew working on your car, your race engineer feeding you intel. You've actually been lucky enough to have uh, real race engineers uh, get into the motion capture suits and really just perform the tasks that they do day to day. And that really is a great sensation when you come in there and you see your whole team around you and you really feel a part of that atmosphere. And then when you talk to teams and you talk to drivers, they don't actually do uh, the level of car setup work you would normally see in a racing game. You're not going there with the wrong gear ratios, with the wrong aero for that circuit. It's up to the driver to just finally tweak the car to your style, not to make drastic changes. The expectations from the driver playing the game are the same as what they would be in real life, given your machinery. You know, at the end of the day, the teammate that you have is the only direct competition that you'll have through the whole season. There's a strange balance of having to work together, but also a desperate competition. Where it gets a little bit personal is when it comes to events like qualifying um, and the race, definitely, where you're just out there to beat him no matter what. Uh, your agent, the media and the paddock itself are your feedback mechanism for how well you're doing in the game. The paddock. Uh, themselves uh, vary location to location. So we've got Mike Paddock in Singapore, Melbourne's built in a park, and you're going to see the key buildings. So the paddock's going to get uh, busier, uh, more press there, more pit girls hanging around, uh, more rival drivers interested in you, uh, the better you do on the track. We've got two different types of media in the game. We've got the impromptu media and you've got the press conference. When you speak to their characters in the press conference, it's usually about your race weekend performances. They're not so sensationalist. It's an easier ride for you, definitely, but it's still a moment of, uh, of celebration. Impromptu characters hanging around the paddock lane, they're always willing to take your first comments when you come out of practice qualifying and, and race. The hardest thing, I think, is that if you've had a bad result, then you have to speak to the media and you have to remain calm and always say the right thing. You have to be a little careful of what you say to the media. Sometimes you'll say things in the heat of the moment. You're the only one that you can blame at the end of the day if you slip and open your mouth and say something you shouldn't have. When you've finished on the podium, it's one, two, three. You can tell the press conference characters all about the race weekend. Those are all of the things that I want to try and portray in the game as what happens in real life. Way beyond any computer game I've ever played before.